Welcome back to Insurmountable. Last time we played the adventure and did a mission where we got pretty close to dying, to be honest. It was pretty hairy. Hopefully the next one's better. I think I want to rotate the characters that we use just to kind of keep things fresh. So we last played Adventurer. So... I don't know, let's do Journalist this time. This is a cauldron-like mountain landscape with a number of rises. Wait, isn't that like the one we just did? Oh, that was a vast crater versus cauldron-like mountain landscape. But isn't a cauldron just a crater, basically? We'll see. We need to find three temporal anomalies, then reach the goal. There's stormy weather. And cold nights. We have that lovely single-minded skill. Heck yeah. We want to try to level up as much as we can. That's about it for how to play the character. Hmm. So we just got some more capacity. Oh, what's this? Oh, right. There's so much stuff. There's multiple pages. Yeah, we just unlocked a bunch of higher quality gear. It takes more capacity to use the higher quality gear, but worth it, I think. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pile on the equipment. So going with the flashlight, of course, fur gloves, high quality snow boots for reduced energy cost on snow, and an oxygen mask. I kind of feel like I should take an oxygen tank, but we will surely get one. I think equipment is the best thing to invest in. The only thing I don't like about this is the fact that we're probably going to get equipment and it's going to be useless, unless it happens to be a higher quality version of the things we already have. But I don't think there's a high quality flashlight or snow. I mean, we already have high quality snow boots. I know there's a high quality oxygen mask and I haven't seen high quality fur gloves. So I kind of feel like some things are going to be irrelevant that we get, but I think this really does set us up for success in the best way that I can. Also, if you hear noises in the background, it's uh, one of our cats playing with a, a like catnip infused ball. He's having so much fun with it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. We have a lot of events right here, including a couple that are completely irrelevant, actually. I guess we'll get XP for them, right? Do we get XP for these? Did we get XP? I mean, we have 160, so I guess we did. Let me check again. Oh no, I went back to the start. So, I can actually end the mission if I wanted to. No, thank you. Okay, yeah, it does give us XP. Gain body temperature with consumables. Another level already? Nice! Get more stuff from waking up. Okay, we are at 4,800 meters in elevation. So we're a decent amount under the death zone. Death zone is... Let's see if we can see it. Apparently higher up than that. Oh, I think it's right there. Yeah, that's it right there. So it's quite high up there. So almost everything in view is out of the death zone. There it is, right there. It's hard to see. Well, let's figure out where we need to head. Oh. That direction. Gonna try to stick to snow as much as possible. 
So you have the high quality snow boots. Yeah, this... The elevation here really goes up and down to extremes. That's a dead end. Hmm. I know it's on snow, but I don't know if it's a good idea to take this route. That's a lot of really steep climbs. I guess. I guess. Oh, the energy right now, the energy cost has increased because of the storm. Oh, let's take this then. Let's see how much the storm is increasing energy cost by. So, I click there. 40.5. 34.6. So, significant. Ooh, there's a bunch of events here. And the anomaly should be somewhere in this general area. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it really only shows up when you're very close to it. Sanity and XP. Let's regain energy. Actually, hold on, hold on. We should level up first. We get more stuff for waking up. Yeah. That's why I wanted to level up first, because I figure I'm probably about to sleep. Let's explore. We can use the flashlight. Nice. Tea and food. Do we need to sleep long? We don't. Although there's not really any harm against it. Harm against it? There's no real harm to it. Might as well sleep through the night, I suppose. Yeah. with some tea. They want our tent. No, I'm, I'm not giving up our tent. Let's get 0.5 body temperature per hour when moving. Yes.
I'm feeling like this is going to be a pretty easy mission. I don't want to call it too early, but <laughs> this is a really strong start. Oh, it's the disembodied hand. Last time we searched for the rest of the body, this time let's examine the hand. The hand is frozen stiff and strangely heavy. The bones protruding from the wrist are smooth and not splintered. Someone must have used a knife or saw to sever the hand from the arm. The thought of the amputation makes you feel sick. You decide to move on before your mood gets any darker. Hurt our sanity a bit. We get a bunch of energy and some XP. Okay, where are we going next? So, on the other side of this mountain? Yeah, that is well in the death zone, but this cave here is not. Although, the route there is freaking horrible. That is the worst route in existence. Is that really the only way to go? I think there's, oh yeah, there's a bunch of rocks here that make it impassable. Still, it takes significantly less energy to go up to the death zone and then come back down. Hmm. Well, I don't need energy. So... Yeah, I don't know. Screw it. <laughs> Uh, spend time. Let's spend time. Ooh, our sanity's hurt. Let's use single minded. Oh, Christ, I guess I am going up there, huh? Okay. Well. Well, well. Like, I kind of have to go there anyway, unless I go all the way down, and that's just too far out of my way. Endless corpse. An indigenous man is sitting slumped against the rock face. He doesn't stir as you approach. As you get closer, you notice that his right hand is missing and the stump has been bandaged with stained rags. His eyes are wide and vacant. He must have died a lonely death. Let's bury the stranger. You huff and puff as you drag the stranger's body to a depression in the rock and collect boulders to cover him. You cover his face last, and only after you've closed his eyes. You take a moment to reflect. Anyone who amputates their own hand and keeps going must be extremely strong and extremely desperate. Either way, paying your last respects to him is the right thing to do. Yeah, increased our sanity. Follow a noise, use our flashlight, and we get another tent! Sleep long. Okay, no ones that are active for the whole mission. Gain sanity with points of interest, less energy, less time cost. Um, 
guess sanity? Let's get... <laughs> well, I can't get anything. I'm maxed on absolutely everything. Squint as you try to make out what you're seeing. Behind the rocks, barely recognizable against the landscape, is a dome-like structure. The fierce winds have not been kind to it. Its surface is peppered with holes. Take a closer look. You slowly walk around the dome. You find a crack and peer inside. Nothing. You look under a piece of the outer shell that has fallen off and is lying on the ground. A steel box. And it's full of provisions. Lose 20 energy... And we get a moon herb. Hmm, worth it, I guess. Oh, that cave up there is just in the death zone. Oh, that's a terrible route. Let's take it. Okay, we need to sleep. We have two tents, though, so no big deal. Take single minded. <gasps> it's the goat. Yes. Uh, close by is a puma hiding in the shadows and waiting for the right moment to attack. Oh, I think this is a different goat, and this time, now that we've learned all about pumas, we can help this goat. We can be the goat to this goat. I help the goat. You grab a stone and throw it hard at the puma, but you just miss. Startled, the puma turns away from the goat and charges you. Worth it. You just barely manage to get over your shock and grab a fallen branch as the puma tackles you to the ground. Adrenaline courses through your veins. You're able to free yourself from the predator's deadly embrace and flail wildly with the branch. Your efforts are successful. The puma decides you're not worth the bother and disappears between the boulders. You take a deep breath and try to calm down. You look for the goat, but there's no sign of it. Whew. Absolutely worth it to save that goat. Oh, it's right there. Hmm. Oh, wait, 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 stop. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, mend my wounds, I guess, because I think I'm about to go out of here. Uh, if I go up there, I won't have the energy to get down, which means I'll have to sleep in the death zone. And although I do have an oxygen mask, I don't have any oxygen bottles. But you know what? Screw it. We're fine. Next anomaly probably won't be higher up in the mountain. Maybe. Possibly. Follow the light. We get some XP. 
sleep. Hmm, sleep short or long? Maybe... Maybe just briefly for now. I say for now as if the cave is still going to be there when we're done, but it's not. It dissolves like everything else in this world. Hmm. Less energy cost on all terrain while sanity is above 60. Yeah. Should be able to keep that active all the time. Hmm. Food or drink? Kind of good on either. I don't know. Food? Thank you. Yeah, somewhere in that general direction. I think I should sleep. Because I'm out of the death zone here. And I'm definitely going to need the energy if I want to get anywhere. to get anywhere it's a very awkward map speaking of how do i get out of here i have to go there is that right no you could also go that way i think that might be worth it No! Icicles! Ow! Oh, we have uh, the storm, which increases the cost for climbing. Let's use single-minded. Overcome that. one of the berries. Get a good amount of energy back. We don't really need anything from this, but I guess the XP is worth it. We'll get some sanity. Plus one body temperature per hour when moving. be a lot of dead ends here because this is all impassable mm. yeah let's go to that cave we'll be out of the death zone so I can get that energy back. Oh, 
Oh, it's the goat event. Follow the bleeding. Um. Oh, no, the bleeding has stopped and we've gotten lost. Oh, keep searching. Keep searching. Oh, you hear it again? Yes, we found it. Get him out of there. Yeah. Okay, so it's somewhere around there. Suggesting we go that way, which I think means that if we try to go this way, it's a dead end. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just go there. Yeah, this map is just, like, the worst for the camera. all this food, might as well use it. I'll save one, just in case I can use it for an event. Is it worth getting that? Nah. in the snow. Let's dig. Oh, we find a body instead of a live person this time. Let's go sleep. Use the flashlight, get some more food. Whenever you reach a point of interest, gain sanity. Yeah. It's probably going to be just about the only way up. There's so many dead ends. Single-minded? Oh, there it is. Get it. That is an inefficient route. I am offended. I must correct it. <sighs> 
Okay, and oh, our exit's in the death zone. That's unusual. Usually, is the exit usually out of the death zone? Yeah, I'm most worried about oxygen. I still don't have any extra oxygen bottles. Let's thoroughly search the corpse. Nothing useful. Okay. Nice flower, some sand D and XP. I'd rather not sleep away my oxygen. So let's eat. I can use up all my food. quite close, so I think I'm just trying to gather some extra XP on the way, pretty much. Would like an oxygen bottle, though. Wait, this is new. You trip and bang your knee. Cursing up a storm, you kick the rock you tripped over, revealing a crack in the ground. It seems as though someone had used the crack to hide their possessions. Hmm... Yeah, I'll use a bunch of energy if I make the crack bigger. I don't want to do that. But let's examine the crack. You reach into the crack. You touch something soft. And then you cut yourself on a sharp edge. You yank your hand back out, cursing as a scarlet spurt of blood splatters the snow. Frustrated, you give up on searching the crack to focus on nursing your wound. Aww. 30% more energy cost when climbing. Dang it. Plus energy cost on all terrain while sanity is above 60. Let's take that to counteract it a little bit. Ooh, mysterious stranger. A warm cap. Oh, thank you. Energy. And let's get out of here. Take some damage. That was a super easy mission. Man, the first mission on Mountain 2, easy. Second one, almost died. Third one, easy. It's very inconsistent. I forgot I could skip this. Our weakest one by far is terrain proficiency. 
what contributes to that? Dangerous terrain crossed contributes to it. Is that it? Yeah, no wonder it's so low. That's the only thing that contributes to it. Your eyes snap open and you rub your temples. Back in the station again. And there's the stranger again, already waiting for you. You want to know why she chose you. After all, you're not the only person in these mountains. I tried to make contact with the locals, but it wasn't just that they didn't trust me. They were downright hostile. Well, who could blame them? After all, we showed up on their island uninvited and started making ourselves right at home. But even considering the underlying hostility, it almost worked out once. I spoke to a shaman. His whole body was covered in tattoos. He believed me, but he was also concerned that his mind would stay addled forever. It works like this. If you die out there, all that happens in that time resets. You experience everything all over again, but you don't remember it. If you have the stone with you though, your memory stays intact, including your memory of your own death. When you come back, your body may be unscathed, but your mind, well. For the shaman, the thought of ending up as a soulless husk was much more frightening than being trapped in the time loop forever. No one wants to end up as a soulless husk. You know you don't, anyway. You want to know if the stranger has tried scaling one of the peaks herself, or if she always gets other people to do the work for her. I'm not a mountaineer. And I wouldn't survive an hour in the death zone. No matter how hard I train, I'll never be as good as you. But I have other qualities. Let's each just stick to the jobs we're good at, alright? That's the only way we'll ever get out of here. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, some environment knowledge. Hmm... Sure. Okay, that's good. Alright, so I think I'm going to end the episode there. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, well, we just played the adventurer and then the journalist, so next time, let's do the scientist. <laughs>